If you're someone who uses Vim, then you've probably heard of macros. If you haven't, this one's for you. Vim macros are an essential tool that can make your life incredibly easier. Simply put, macros are a way to record a sequence of commands in Vim and play them back. This can save you a lot of time and effort, especially if you find yourself doing repetitive tasks. Another great thing about the macros is that you can edit them. This means that if you made a mistake while recording one, you can go back and fix it without having to start over. Let's see all of these in action, but first, coffee. So let's talk about Vim macros, registers, and everything between them. And for an example, I'm going to use XH to grab one of the Kubernetes configuration files from the official repo. Let's remove the status bar for Tmux for readability. And note that we have a standard YAML file with a few steps here. I'm going to just show them quickly and show that there is a single space between each and every step. So I can use that to create some kind of a macro and automate the change. To understand changes, we first need to understand registers. So in Vim, we can use registers to do anything. Registers are just memory and spaces in memory where we can save commands to or text, strings. We can just copy anything there or cut things there and use them to move on. As an example, I can copy the line that says run and paste it. And that goes to the unnamed register. But if I were to copy that into a register, I can do that into somewhere like the register A. And copy timeout 30 minutes into A. When I paste, it still pastes the unnamed register. But if I paste from the A register, you can see that timeout 30 appears again and again. To do that, I'm using quote and the register. So in this case, it would be A. I can use numbers, I can use any other character. And that's important to know because even when we record a macro, that's recorded into a register. So I'm going to make a change and I'm going to record something. You can see that I'm recording into the register Q now. And I'm writing Omer and then something. And then I press Q again to stop recording. Now I have something that I can repeat by going to the at sign and then Q, which is the register that I've used to record my macro onto. I can do that multiple times. I can do that 10 times and 20 times. You can repeat however many times you want any macro that's recorded. The nice thing about macros is that we can read their contents. So since I've recorded into the Q macro, I can paste its contents by doing the same thing as I did with A before, just pasting whatever is in register using the double quote and Q. See, I have uh, O, which is open a new line, and then Omer, JJ is my quit out of normal mode. Let's just add another thing to see what happens now. I've changed my register, but I need to copy that back to the register queue in order to repeat it. So once I've done that, I can now run my macro by running at queue. And now you can see it's Omer something and then another thing concatenated into the end of it. If I want to add a line between them, I can add an O in between and JJ to quit normal mode and then do that again. Copy into the register queue and then run the register by at queue. And now you can see Omer, something, drop line, another thing. And I can do it again and again and again and repeat it. And that's the basics of registers and macros. Now again, pressing Q, Q is recording into the register Q. You can see that below. I don't have to record into the register Q. I can do that into any other register in the system. Let's record a change and test it. I'm recording again into the register Q and I'm dropping to the next empty line where I have free space to record something. Let's add another step and just add a simple YAML array with something in it. I can stop recording by hitting Q again and I can repeat the process. So if I'm going with at Q, I now have another step and another step each time wherever I hit the next free line. So you can see them added on and on and on in the file. Let's record another macro and add a prefix to each new line where I have a new step. I'm going to add a prefix, a common change. I can just add a prefix and then rerun the macro. Now rerunning the macro can be done by hitting at and the macro like we've discussed before. And it can be done like by hitting at at again if I already have a macro that was pre-run before. So at at is your way to run macros again and again. It's just an easy shortcut. And you can see the prefix is added to every new step in the YAML. Let's undo and let's see what's the contents of the macro. It's a little bit hard to understand, but if you go slowly through it, you'll see there is an 
I to run something, write prefix, etc., etc., etc. That's the beauty of having registers and seeing their contents, also being able to edit them and copy them back. Let's look at a more realistic example, which is a host file. Above I have the one that I got as an input and the one below is the end result that I'm aiming at. Now note that only the first string has uh, quotes around it. I can use some kind of a plugin like to delete the surrounding quotes. This doesn't work very well with macros, so stick to the basics. So in order to create the first line here as the first line that I have in the example below, I'm going to be very simple with my commands. So I'm recording into the register A, I'm removing the quotes, pasting that string at the end, going back, removing the comma, and then taking this string until the comma by DT comma, pasting it again before master node. Now I'm going back, removing the comma, and all I have to do now is just replace the commas with spaces and maybe space out between the strings a little bit to match what I have below, which is instead of one, just having four spaces. I'll do that quickly. So I have my command in place. I'm rerunning it. Looks perfect. Rerunning it on the first line. Looks great too. Going to the fourth line, we'll see something quite unusual which is not the structure we expected. Some strings are gone, uh, the line starts with a comma, not really sure what happened. Only by debugging it later, I've understood that there is a master node and this is a worker node. And by using the capital M for my editing in the line, the macro here lost its way because there's no master node, there's worker node, so that's capital W. And the macro, of course, isn't aware of that change. So what I'm going to have to do here is to re-record a new macro. I can already see there's a difference with the last two lines where it starts with Ansible. Let's see how it goes. So pretty much doing the same, copying the worker node at the end, moving the OCP, adding a hash, adding the string from the beginning, removing all the commas, adding spaces, etc., etc. All right, I'm ready and I can try and rerun it. Rerunning it works perfectly on the next line. We're running it again on the next command. Looks pretty good, but I've tried running it multiple times thinking it'll work on the next ones and it didn't. The next line worked perfectly, but line number seven doesn't seem so good. And again, if you see the difference, the last two lines start with Ansible and I probably used one of the differences in the name as part of my macro and that's why it got broken. Try using standard things in your macros. By standard, I mean, don't use things that are different between the lines. Use things like spaces, empty lines, commas, delimiters that are going through and are the same in every line in terms of structure. If you try using characters, make sure they appear everywhere in the same place. Otherwise, this is what happens. So here I'm having to record three different macros to handle something like eight lines, which is not ideal, but it's good for demonstration. Okay, we're pretty much done. And I have a little bit of a problem now. There is kind of inconsistency in the structure of lines in terms of spacing, which is not too bad, but I still want it to look nicer. So there's a trick I'm using, and what I'm doing is a visual block, and then using capital I to start writing in the beginning of the block, and then indenting or moving as many spaces as I want. Once I stop, you can see all the lines are moving according to what I've just changed. And that's pretty much sums it up. I don't want to go any further, but this is the basics of macros, one of the most useful tools you can think of in Vim. I have a lot more Vim content and terminal content if you just look in my channel or click here on the suggestions to the right. And I'll see you on the next video.